Hello, hello, and welcome to Lawrence Plays for your weekly update of Factorio with Crastorio 2 and Space Exploration. And so I'm going to start off by uh, by talking about some of the things I've been up to in the last in the last stream because that's the uh, that's what always feels like a good place to start. So I I, I was um, I started the stream out on on Talos, which, and uh, my plan was to get it finished up and and just just working, so I could then forget about it for a while and go off and do something else. So. I started off by trying to make sure that everything was running and everything was running self-sufficiently and everything was going to just keep keep ticking over even even when even when I started to ignore it. So the first thing to do about that was to make sure I had all of the inputs for all of the resources I needed because as you might remember from previous episodes there's not very much oil up here on Talos and I've basically used all of it that's within the easy accessible distance. There's also not a great deal of coal. There's a little patch here and if I look out on the map there's Generally, well, okay, there's a, there's a million of it up there, which seems like quite a lot, but it's a fair distance away, and it's going to be a little bit awkward to get where where was it? I've lost it there, over there. Which is going to be a little bit awkward to get to, and even a million isn't all that much. And there is no more in the area that I've explored. And if we look at the Universe Explorer, there's there's not a great deal of coal, and there's very very little oil. So we're basically doomed to uh, doomed on that one. So what I've decided is the the uh, correct way to deal with this is to um, basically import everything that uses that uses hydrocarbons from from the other planets. So back on Norvis, there's a, those arrays of guns that I've been talking about before, and I've now got it set up so that we're requesting the heat shield tiles, low density which use um, sulfur, which comes from oil, low density structures which come from um, which need plastic. Explosives, which need sulfur, sulfur, which obviously, which also comes from oil, and the plastic, which comes from oil. So we're then shipping those out to all the various different things that need them. But in order to make sure that we're we're still using up all of the resources that come out of these uh, core pulverizers over here, which seem to have ground to a halt, I'm going to need to have a look at that. Oh, yes, I remember why. We'll talk about that in a moment. In order to make sure that all of these are used up, we've still got the uh, the coal being fed out around here and going up onto this belt to be taken away and used in the processing. And we've got the any oil that comes out will be then refined here and then turned into sulphur, which gets comes down this belt and is put into the um, into the chest down here to make sure it actually does get used up. <clears throat> now there's a couple of problems with this. One of them is that this belt only runs when there's fewer than 100 explosives in here, um, so that needs to be got rid of. In fact, the and the, these machines here need to be got rid of as well because none of this is actually required. Because I've diverted the, diverted the coal away, we're not going to be using any sulphur up here. There's not going to be any explosives coming around here. This is going to be controlled remotely from the other end. So we just want to let, leave this running all the time. Um, but that's a that's a thing I can fix in the in, in the next episode. So that's the um, that's the the oil is being dealt with that way. The the coal is going around here and will be ta taken away and and, um, and 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 lost. And we're actually going to need a fair amount of coal because if you remember the processing for beryllium. Um, if we use the slightly less efficient method, that's this one, because we don't have enough uh, um, pyroflux, then we have to use then then this uses up coal in order to make the uh, the beryllium, which is a bit of a shame, um, but it's just another another sink on the supplies there. So yes, over here, what else is going on? Right, so we're bringing all of those things in here. The sulfur is coming out here to be made into acid in order to keep the uh, again for the for the uh, beryllium processing up there. Uh, the, plats, the the heat shield tiles and um, low density structures and explosives, they're just there to be used in the delivery cannon capsules. So they're being fitted into these things being, and then the delivery cannon capsules are being made and we've got a lot of those. But I'll talk about that again in, in a moment. We've also got machines over here that are trying to make delivery cannon capsules, um, but they're not um, because... Well, why? Why would there? There's no plastic. There's no plastic, and and rather than shipping the plastic over here to make the uh, low density structures, I've decided it's much more sensible and effective to just hang on to it in this area and uh, use it for and um and use the uh, and bring in the heat shield tiles separately because you can you can ship those around by delivery cannon, and so it's a lot more efficient to ship those over rather than shipping plastic and then use that to make make the uh, low density structures. The plastic I am shipping in is going over here where we're making it into the uh, into the air filters, and those are. They're being used up a little bit, actually. I'm fairly sure this was full last time I looked. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe I, uh, maybe, maybe I've been playing for a bit longer when I last looked. But anyway, those, those then flow up here, as you, as you're familiar with. They come up here, and they'll go into the, um, into the big warehouse up here. Now, it's been pointed out to me by a couple of people, both David in the comments and Mark, um, and when he was uh, watching back on the stream to make sure we hadn't broken all of his stuff, um, that I've actually broken the belt here. So this was supposed to be coming out. This belt was originally looping back on itself and going up here, and this. So I, I dragged in this one to go across here, and I was expecting to go underneath both belt sections but because of the vagaries of factorio belt dragging it didn't do that and that means those um any, any filters that come out here and go up this way that are supposed to go up here i'd just get passed straight back into the warehouse for, and just go around and around and around in circles which is a bit of a nonsense um this is going to be relatively easy to fix i can i can get the bots to do it by just doing that and um that 
and the bots will come over and and, and fix that up for me. Um, however, it doesn't. It only matters a little bit. These these two have, uh, are not working, and these this one isn't working. But all of the um, all of the air filters that are being sent down here and then back around here, they're not all getting used up. So some of them are just getting passed around and carrying on around the belt up here. So actually, it kind of doesn't matter. Uh, and if it wasn't for these. Uh, sorry, the, these three on, on the side over here, it would be quite tempting to just get rid of the uh, splitter here and stop feeding them up around this way. But, you know, it, it was it was that easy to fix, and now we've got a load more of them going around. We can make these machines, these purifiers happy again. And it means we've got slightly more of them going around here. That's... I don't see that as being a problem either way. It does mean we'll pull in a few more off this belt, but again, that doesn't really matter. To make sure this doesn't, this system doesn't get too too ridiculous and carried away, I've put in, I, I've limited this inserter to only insert when there's less than a thousand in here. So we should be sitting at about, as you can see, we're sitting at about a thousand. It occasionally goes a little bit over, it's occasionally a little bit under, but basically it's about a thousand. This is this is working nicely. Um, the dirty ones are being brought back in along here and being put into these um, into these machines to be cleaned. So the uh, the other new thing I added was this train system over here, <clears throat> and so this has been added in in order to um, to supply some outposts I've been making. Because, well, we've got we've got this processing facility over here, and we've got we had the two mines that were inside the inside the, the area that I've, I've claimed, but they weren't producing fast enough. Um, and if we look up, if we look over here, um, and it seems to be okay at the moment. That's but that's because the system was backlogged a bit because of reasons I'll go into in a moment. I keep saying that, but I will, I promise. Um, but when it's not, when there are problems, then this this is running through as fast as it can. Even uh, with them, with those two mines, were not sufficient to keep it satisfied. So what I've added in is an additional two mines off here in these these little extra outposts. So these are, as you can see, linked in by uh, by railway, um, and each one of them is set up as a sort of its own secure little compound. So it's got a wall all the way around the outside with lasers as well. So hopefully this will keep the biters away. And it's also got air purification down here by the big mining drill, and the other one is exactly the same: uh, air purification by the mining drill and a spiky wall all the way around it. Apart from that bit there that didn't get built for some reason, that's a bit of a fail. Um, so yes, this this is now keep this is now maintaining sort of keeping this area safe. Over here we've got the standard sort of thing where we're um, we, we, we've got air, air, air filters being brought in here by train. So what I've done here is I've got the two two stations on the same track. One here for picking up the uh, beryllium core chunks. So the train comes in, the locomotive goes here, and we've got the two wagons here to load up. And then a second station here where the locomotive goes here doesn't load up with beryllium core chunks because a locomotive wouldn't know what to do with those, and puts its wagon here where it will um, unload where it can unload its um, it, 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 its filters and load up on the dirty filters. So the idea is the train brings out the clean ones, takes back the dirty ones for recycling. This is set up uh, to monitor this one, and, and then down here we say if there's ever zero filters in the uh, in the in, in the uh, in the warehouse, then we trigger L, which is the train limit. You've seen this sort of thing before. But what is interesting and notable about this is um, my initial thought was to use the enable disable, which you can do. You can put in, you can say if there's fewer than a number of the uh, pollution filters, then trip, then enable or disable the station based on that. The problem is that doesn't work with this particular system because with the, the way this feeds them in and out. There, when, it, when it's running very, very low, it briefly goes to zero zero filters, so it enables the station. Then another one of these comes back round and gets loaded back in, so it goes back to one, so the station gets disabled. And the train that's trying to come out to it then goes, oh, there isn't actually a station for me to go to. It skips on to the next item in its um, itinerary and goes back to the... Um, and goes back to the, uh, the, the the pickup station. So I had a train just going round and round this loop endlessly because every time it, it would it would go oh, oh there's a station that needs some filters it would set off and then it get here and go oh actually it doesn't need the filters I'll go back to the pickup station so I come round here back up to here and they go oh it needs some filters so it head off and it was just going round and round there and that was obviously a nonsense. So we've um, so I've stopped doing that and it turns out that, that even if you use the, if you use not that one if you use the train limits instead that prevents a train from starting a journey there if the train limit is zero. However, if it's already set off and gets and um, gets back and uh, gets back, uh, if the train is already set off and then the limit changes back to zero, the train will keep coming. So if I if I uh, turn that off and that off. There you go. So th there's no train limit now. So the train has started moving. You can see it there. If I now enable it again and set the train limit from there. What is those? This is the beryllium core train train. So you see, this train is still coming. It's still on its way over, even though the train limit is now back to zero. And once that train gets out of the way, it will happily pull into the station like this, unload the uh, it, unload its clean clean filters. <clears throat> and I'm not worrying exa about exactly how many go in there. It'll load up on the dirty filters, then it's, it's, and then eventually it'll get some inactive, and it'll it'll head off back over to back over to here, where it can then unload those filters for uh, for, for cleaning and uh, and load up with some new clean ones. So that system works quite nicely. The train can just sort of trundle around in circles like that, and it it 
as far as I can tell, I, I believe this should should work. It seems seems to be pretty good. It seems to be working now to have, now to fix it like that. And there you can see it's, it's starting to stock up again. But in here we've got this limiter set on here, so you can never have more than 50 clean filters. And there's there's room for uh, 250 dirty filters, which is massively excessive. You, you're never going to need that meant that many. But I thought because this there's never because you want to pick up all of them when you stop at a station, we might as well make it as we might as well make sure there's plenty of room in there. So yes, that's working. I'm um, fueling these trains because these, the trains are in slightly odd places. I decided the best way to fuel them is to uh, is to pull wood off the um, off the power generation system, and, and technically that should probably be um, output priority to the left like that. So the power is prioritised, but it can pull out any excess, <clears throat> feed it over here, where it gets turned into the uh, into the refined fuel and put into the train to power, power the train, so the train can go a little bit faster, a little bit further because it's using this rather than just burning wood. Uh, Mark was very disapproving, dis disapproving of me of, of uh, everyone doing this to his uh, beautiful, beautifully balanced um, power generation systems. <clears throat> but I feel that like because I'm not actually using all the power, there's plenty of wood there. It won't miss a little bit of it. That's I, th I think that's fine. And I'm doing the same thing over here as well. I think um, yes, here we go. So we're pulling pulling the wood off from over here. I have set up the priority on this one. It's coming around here. It's being refined and then fed into the train to keep to keep that happy. So that's enabled me to, well, I was going to say it's enabled me to double my, my um, core chunk production. That's not true. It's enabled me to double the number of mining core mining drills I have running. But as you can hope you probably remember from the um, from, 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 from us talking about it before, uh, a doubling of the um, number of stations actually only leads to a multiplying by 1.4 of the amount of core chunks you get because the more um, having to, more core miners slows down each individual miner. So overall you get you multiply the amount you get from one miner by the uh, square root of the total number of miners you've got. So moving up to, so going from one mining drill, this one, to having all four of them will double the amount I get. But going from two to four will only increase it by 1.4 times. So, or yeah, 1.4 times one one drill to double one drill, which is a not quite as much of an increase, but it's at least it's a it, it is an increase. And if we need more in the future, well, that one's not going to be too difficult to get. This one's probably not going to be too difficult to get. And I can expand out and expand out as as um, as, as required, as and as we get better, more and better weapons. I think we've developed nukes now, but uh, I didn't have any with me, which is a bit of a shame. Oh, and while I'm talking about bringing stuff in, I should mention uh, mention a minor comedy moment that happened. I was um, setting up the uh, delivery chest here, in the, right in the middle of the uh, in, in the middle of the factory, factory, and I must have misclicked slightly because the delivery cannon capsules didn't hit the chest they were just land they were landing next to it and damaging everything what? around it no. so that was um that was fun and the first panic of the evening um I'm, but i managed to quickly repair that before too much damage was done so it's um yeah not too bad but it's it's, it's worth remembering that um the delivery cannon capsules are basically a railgun weapon um that, that we've we've coupled a load of supplies onto and then put an armored place for it to land so yes they're quite dangerous Ah yes, I promised I was going to talk about why all of this was all of this was gumming up and backing up and, and, and causing problems. So what's going on over here is that um, <clears throat> when the core chunks come around here, they get as, as you're aware, they get made into delivery cannon capsules. Great, the delivery cannon capsules get shipped out around here and used by the delivery cannons. However, um, in some cases, with some some materials, you get a lot more delivery cannons out than you actually need. Um, that's especially the case with beryllium. It was a little bit the case with vulcanite, but it's especially the case with ber beryllium. Um, um, so we're getting far more delivery cannons out than we know what to do with. And so that means that all of this is backed up, backed up, backed up all the way along here to the point where we've got too much properly copper. Um, and now this is gummed up all the way through here to the point where all of these, um, all the crushers have stopped working because they're, they're all full. There is a system over here that's supposed to take out any excess uh, core chunks uh, and bring them down, bring them down this way, and let them flow through when there are too many, too many delivery cannon capsules available. Now, Mark did ask me why I've set this up with a cable stringing across the uh, the factory, monitoring here, and when that gets too high, then letting them flow, rather than just using a priority, rather than just going uh, priority left on this one like uh, like that. Um, and to be honest, there isn't there isn't a particularly good reason. The best I could come up with is is um, well. What if there was a, little, a sort of a momentary backlog because we had a bit too much flowing through, but the systems, but the machines were going to catch up again, and so we'd have, and we didn't have all of the, and then we might run out of capsules. It's not a great justification, and to be honest, I probably, I, I probably could just have had, had it uh, set up like that, but, um, but I seem not to have done. 
Anyway, the idea is that when this triggers, it then passes the um, the excess core chunks down here, where they'll go into a delivery cannon, and then when we've got core chunks and delivery cannon capsules, we'll ship them off to uh, off to Norvis to be to be used. Now, this is great, except I hadn't set it up because I'm a muppet. So all we need to do is say we want to go to Norvis, and we want to aim. Uh, where is where, where is it going to be? It's going to be up here somewhere where the where the core chunks are dropped off, I imagine. Um, it's going to be a chest. There it is. So we drop them in here like that. Uh, then we go back to uh, Talos and the delivery cannon here. We say, okay, that's going to the right place. We turn that on. It immediately starts firing, pulling in, building more. And then hopefully it'll keep, keep firing. Um, yeah, like that. There we go. So this should allow me to then start pulling in some of the uh, core chunks from here. And also using up some of the delivery cannon capsules. It's not firing quite as quickly as I would expect it to. Um, I'll have to investigate what 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 logic it's using. There we go. There's another there's another fire. So the theory is that that, that will then help get through the excess number of delivery cannon capsules, and then also get through all of these ex, the excess quantity of core chunks we've got over here. Uh, yeah, you see, so it's, it's pulling a little bit in each time. But the problem is, each of these each time it fires, each time these work, they only they only actually fire off 20 core fragments. So to be honest, it's not actually going to be getting through the core fragments all that quickly. Um, the main reason it's going to be useful is because it's going to start using up these delivery cannon capsules a bit more quickly. So you can see these have started running again now. They're making delivery cannon capsules. That probably means the copper is going to be flowing a little bit. That hopefully will eventually mean, yeah, there we, there we go, the copper flowed a little bit then. So we should that should allow the whole system to get up and flowing again. Um, it's a bit slow, but in theory it will uh, it will allow everything to start running and hopefully it'll be able to keep up with the uh, with the uh, demands on the system. Uh, we shall see how that goes. Oh, I have actually, I did now, I take all that back, I did actually work out that this system is now not using the copper up fast enough. Because previously, we are using up copper in order to make these low density structures, um, whereas now, we're not. We're only using it to make the cables for these, which is that it doesn't really use up enough enough of the uh, copper, I suspect. So we're going to have a bit of a, a copper overflow problem in, the, uh, in this system. Um, so what I'm probably going to have to do is actually make some low density structures on site just to use the copper up. I'll have to have a bit of a think about that, decide if that is the best way to do it. Um, if so, I can probably do it by removing this substation, putting it up here, um, and then having the copper, the, sorry, the plastic come here, split, and some of it sent up this way. Feels a bit dirty though to be using the um, using up copper like that. I don't know whether I'm a fan of that or not, but it's, it seems to be. I feel like it might just be something I'll I'll have to do in order to get all of the resources being used up in the right sort of proportions. Hmm. We'll, we shall we shall see. Maybe somebody will come up with a bright idea for this that I haven't thought of. <laughs> it's also worth noting that the defences I've been putting in. I've now finished off the defences around the main. Uh, in post, it's not the it's not an out. Well, it is an outpost because it's off off Norvis, but it's a, a mid mid level post because it's 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 the main thing on this planet. But it's not what it's it's bigger than these little outposts. But it's still an outpost that's generating all of the beryllium. So yes, I went in and put the walls around them as I've been saying I was meaning to. And I thought if I'm going to leave, I probably should do that. And these are it's worth noting these are the spiky walls. So when biters attack them, it does damage to the biters as well as um uh, as well as as well as the biters doing damage to the walls, which which helps a little bit with the lasers trying to kill them. I've um, also set up over here, I've set up a delivery cannon to get rid of the uranium-238 that's going to be coming out of the uranium processing here. So the uranium ore, what little bit there is, comes out of here, floods down here, goes into the centrifuge, and is, as we're familiar, is turned into all of these outputs. Now, all of the... Um, okay, so we're getting rid of the iron and the stone around there, so those are got rid of properly. But the two uraniums are both being passed down here um, into, into this delivery cannon. And so this is eventually going to have, have issues because it's going to fill up with uranium-235, the shiny one, because that isn't being shipped out. Um, probably the, the best way to fix this would be just to put in another uh, delivery cannon uh, here to, to, to deal with that. So I'll probably do that in the next episode. So we'll just stick in another one of those there and split the split the belt here and take, take the, uh, the, the appropriate stuff over to this one. So that's going to be fairly straightforward. And as you can see, I've got the delivery cannons over here. So that's not going to be too bad, but it's a thing that I should probably do really. I tinkered a little bit with the, um, the brilliant processing up here. So I've got, uh, I've made, I've, I've, I've tweaked the number of uh, pulverizers along here to be exactly the right number required to deal with a, a red belt on the way coming in, which is what I've got. So this should be exactly right now. And I put one productivity module in each one. Now, one thing I would like to do next time I come out here, which 
I don't know when that's going to be. But when I do come out here again, I want to bring out some beacons so I can put speed, so I can speed beacon all of these, make them run a lot faster, and then put um, and then have a lot more productivity modules in, and in everything all the way down here. So all I reckon all of these can take productivity modules because we're producing so many more delivery cannon capsules than we need. So I reckon getting a bit more of every everything out of every step of these is going to be the way to go, and that will that will allow me to have. A significant amount more beryllium um, ingots coming out. I mean, that said, at the moment, we're absolutely fine. As you can see, there's quite a backlog of them building up, but that's because we haven't started using them anywhere. Once we start doing um, astro science and potentially building spaceships, and we might decide we want to use these to use the more efficient uh, rocket park creation recipe. Um, cargo rocket sections can be made using beryllium plate. Or they can be made without the beryllium plate. But if you do the beryllium plate recipe, all of the ingredients are the same except for that one. But you get twice as many out. So that's quite a lot more efficient. So I think that's probably going to be worthwhile. And once I do, once I do come back out here again, and we reckon we need going to need, and we're going to need more stuff. I think that. Sorry, I will come out here again when we need more beryllium. And I think what I shall be end up doing is going out and setting up a lot more mi mining outposts. Um, probably. I want to double the throughput, which means I'll need to go out and get another 12 of them, probably, which is quite a lot. Um, <clears throat> and then that'll allow me to have another one of these sort of setups, probably about here. Get double the output, and um, yeah, that'll be that'll that'll be a big improvement. Maybe I'll, I might I could consider actually starting doing the traditional style mining on some of some of these patches, um, and just make sure that we prioritise these ones to, to in order to get the core chunks out for making the uh, delivery cannon capsules. Um, it would it would allow me to get quite a lot more beryllium quite quickly and easily, so that might be worth doing. But again, that's going to be something to do when I realise I need some more. So yes, that was it. As I say, there was there was a lot of fiddling and tinkering with the stuff out here on Talos, um, and I feel like I've now got it to the point where it's probably going to be, well. I was going to say self-sufficient. I don't mean self-sufficient because I think there are a few things we, I've pointed out that, that need to be fixed, and a few of them I have fixed during this during this uh, while I've been recording this episode. But there are a few that I need to go in and just pro properly fix them so that they're not going to ha they're not going to cause issues. But all of that can be done remotely, but with Navsat and, and robots. So I think that's going to keep things going reasonably nicely. So at this point, I decided that was quite enough of that, and I, I escaped. I used one of the um, little. Uh, space capsule things to take off from the planet to fly up to the spaceship that was in orbit and then got back in the spaceship and flew over to Norvis orbit. There was also a, uh, a panic and a crisis in the middle of that but I shall talk about that tomorrow to keep you guessing. <laughs> So now that's um, that's one of the outpost planets done. Let's go and have a look at Njord now. This is where Tristan has been um, hard. At, well, he I was going to say hard at work. Actually, that's not quite true. I think he'd mostly finished this one. So now he's so I guess he's actually been hardly at work over here. Um, but over here on Njord, he did a few things. Um, one of them was was fixing the uh, dirty Holmium water cleaning up here. As we uh, we talked about that we talked about this in the last set of videos. So this belt now has a has, there's a, there's a ghost belt there that's not ne apparently never going to be built, and that forces all of the stuff all of the output up here to go onto the top side of the belt, which means it'll be used up first by these machines because as I, as I mentioned before, inserters are lazy and will always take from the near side of the belt. So that's great. That's fixed. Oh, he says he's, he's made some progress for trains. I'm not quite sure what he means by that. Um, He's put down there. Oh, there's some railway, some railway out here. Maybe oh, this is presumably. Yes, he's made some. He's expanded the train stuff out. So he's got um, steric stations along here, mineral water and coal that are being brought in, and core fragments. So he's got what's he got? He's got a core pickup there, and there he's got mineral water being dug up and coal being dug up there. So yeah, he's setting up. He's setting up a train system to uh, to bring in all the resources that his little factory down here needs. Um, because to be honest, bringing bringing in coal and mineral water by a delivery cannon seems like a horrible, horrible idea. He at least doesn't does, doesn't seem to have a shortage of oil. In fact, he doesn't seem to need need. Where's he getting oil from? Because he does need. He's going to need oil for feeding into the um, in, into the core into the delivery cannon um, maker. Uh, or maybe he's doing it all from um, coal liquefaction. Yes, there's a coal liquefaction machine down here. So right, okay. So he's turning. He's t uh, hmm. I don't know. Uh, this is a, a a mystery to me. I'm I'm not sure how, how he's dealing with. It. I mean, there's coal coming in here. There's there's the setup for fluid here. Maybe this is going to be oil, and he just hasn't got got that working yet. I'm not quite sure. Um, but over here, he does seem to ha he does have a set, he's got a set of cannons built up, and he's got a few delivery cannon capsules. But it looks like I don't think any of them have really started firing. If we look over here, you'd be, oh, oh no, no, we did get some. No, we did get some Holmium over to to um to Norvis. 
but the system has stopped due to well there's an excess of raw rare metal sorry rare metal coming through there but that's not not the problem he just doesn't have any you know, he doesn't have any core chunks available they're coming in very very slowly probably from a single drill uh, so it looks like the problem is the number of the um, holmanite core chunks coming in here he's got presumably only one only one drill digging them up this was like about a drill one drills worth of them coming through so they're dribbling through they're getting grabbed up and put pro and processed but it's not producing all that much of the holmium or of the core fragments so the rest of the system is running fairly slowly and that explain and that makes perfect sense because he's going out now now he's got a basic system set up and working he's now heading out to a core pickup here and here and presumably yeah more of them up here because he's got he's, he doesn't have any biters to worry about in this planet the lucky sod so he can just go out he can just spray his train system across the planet and just go out and set up set up as many of these um core mi core mines as he wants to and it's going to be really really easy so yeah so i imagine next week he's going to just slap those slap a load of those down it'll be really quick and effective and then boom he'll suddenly have loads and loads of um core chunks and holmanite available and we'll start to actually ship the ship all of the uh, all of the things out here from, uh, in much much larger quantities so yeah, that looks like looks like it's going to go pretty well. It just needs a bit more, um, just a bit of finishing off, to be honest. It's also interesting to note he's got all of it, he's got a lot of his setup a bit a bit more widely spaced than I have. Um, that's just a just a design choice, I suppose. Uh, whereas I put all of my uh, gun turrets close together and had a belt of um, delivery cannon capsules running down next to them. He's just got them a little bit more spread out and a lot more belt space to uh, to buffer the uh, capsules into. I don't have strong opinions either way it's just uh, as i say just just a, just a style thing next up is the third outpost that we're working on at the moment this is kothar which is um, mike mike's planet of um where, where he's been doing all kinds of stuff so we've got the usual sort of setup with power and defenses and so on and so on um let's have a look at look at look, look, look some map view right so mike has taken a sort of slightly different approach to us once he got the power and stuff like that, that set up he then seems to have gone rather all in on building up building up a rather neat railway system so he's got so he's got sort of a um bit of a city block setup going here with the with the uh, with the train systems and a and a parking area for lots and lots of trains that he doesn't actually have at the moment set up here um and then this looks like yes this 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 is his start on the um on the on the uh what's he getting iridium iridium core mining and uh, th that requires acid because of course it does because iridium is kind of awkward as you've seen from the um from the, from the graphs i uh, sorry the diagrams i wave around every so often <laughs> um, so he's put in a core miner and started started digging stuff up. He's got twenty thousand uh, core chunks. So, I mean, that's good. That's a good start. He's got them all sort of stockpiled. He just needs to start doing something with them now. <laughs> um, so he's put it. Yes, in order to get the uh, oil mine. Oh, sorry, in order to get the um, uh, what do you call it? The, the sulfuric acid for this processing step here. He's put in an oil uh, oil mine up here, and um, I'm very jealous because my planet has he has more. I think he has more oil in in either one of these patches than I do across my entire planet, which is quite sad um, because I kind of need that oil. But nope, Mike is uh, apparently hoarding it all on his planet. So that's being pulled up. It's going into these um, storage tanks, and then there's a train here that can pick it up and take it down here to be processed, um, which he's is doing. Well, he's making sulphur. He hasn't got quite as far as the sulfuric acid yet, possibly because he realised he needed iron, and just hasn't done that yet. Uh, oh yes, and he realised that he didn't have any fluid wagons, so he had to bootstrap some um, iron production. So he found managed to find an iron patch, possibly this one over here, um, <laughs> and then start and then set up a little uh, smeltery system, which I'm probably not going to be able to find. But somewhere he set up a little smeltery system to make himself enough steel that he would then be able to make the the uh, the steel that he needed in order to make these uh, the, these these fluid wagons. <laughs> it's a little bit of a fail there, but never mind. Oh yeah, and he handcrafted those as well, in fact. Um, he says he's also built and set up an iron mine. I, oh, there, here it is. This massive iron mine down here. I, how did I miss that? Apparently I did, though. Uh, and he then spent quite a lot of time building up, an building up an enormous pollution cleaning belt of not actually doomed. So if I turn on the pollution, you can see it's... it's um, I don't know. Sort of effective. So that'll be what this belt here is, I suspect. Yes, here we go. You can see his long belt coming down here with the filters on it. It's the same as they are on all the other planets, except that Mike's is going all the way around this enormous area... Uh, how, what does it do from here? Oh, it goes, it goes round the outside of this lake. Oh, and then down here. Um, so he was having all kinds of crises with the shortages of belts and things while he was doing this. But essentially, this is now um, making this, in theory at least, and probably in practice, it's going to keep all of the pollution inside this area because Mike, do Mike does have biters to worry about, as you can see. He's not, his planet isn't as bitery as mine is, but because he's set up on the corner of it rather than, or the edge of it rather than in the middle, like I did. Um, He's, he's set up in an area that's as bitery as it's going to get. So from here, if he expands sort of towards the middle of the planet, it's only going to get friendlier. Whereas mine is going to get worse and worse as I move outwards. But that's meant he's been able to set up. He's been able to set up the system as as you can see. 
uh, to clean up all the pollution in this area and yeah i mean it it seems to be working uh with the the pollution isn't isn't getting outside his his um area of control so good well done there and whilst it's been whilst i know it was quite a large effort for him because i think he kept running out of belts and, um, and other sort of essential things like that he has got it set up and working so i think that's everything i'm going to talk about today because the uh, the video is about the sort of length i'm aiming for at the moment next time we shall talk about um the, how we had a shortage of people why we had a shortage of people and what that led to and what sort of panics we had and also touch a little bit on uh, on, on the future and um and on what's going on in norvis and norvis orbit so, as ever, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. As there'll be another part of this tomorrow. There won't be a video on Sunday because I've started. I, I've stopped. I've, now, now that I've finished Dyson Sphere program, I've started doing an XCOM stream instead. And to be honest, that doesn't really lend itself to catch-up videos in quite the same way that um, the Dyson Sphere program and Factorio do. However, if you uh, if you find you're missing, uh, missing, if you feel you're missing having something to watch on Sunday, then uh, the, the recording of the stream is available. It's a little bit longer, so you know, got pl plenty of stuff to watch there, and um, you can watch me getting all of my. All all of my friends and channel supporters horribly slaughtered by the evil alien hordes. Fun and games for everybody. Um, they will be back for a more Factorio streaming on Monday, so come along and join us then, 7.30pm UK time, for, uh, for, for, the, for carrying on streaming this, this, this very game that you're seeing at the moment. Uh, you'll be able to see me running around scrambling to fix all the, all the problems and, and screw-ups I've realised I've made in this, in, in the, on this planet and in this, in this design, and there's a, there's a few of them. Um, then I should be back on Wednesday for some more XCOM and more merciless slaughter of, 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 um, of support supporters and whatnot. And Tuesdays and Thursdays we'll be bringing uh, miscellaneous other videos on Tuesdays and uh, GTA videos on Thursdays. Those seem to be coming out at a reasonable rate at the moment. Make sure you're a channel supporter so you can get the, get access to those a week early. Um, and in, in, make sure in, and, uh, and enjoy them. They're all lot of, a lot of fun. Finally, please check out the channel sponsor. That's Treefall.be. They um, they provide hosting services for games like uh, Factorio and Minecraft and so on. And um, yeah, they're they're nice and cheap. And, and if you use the code Lawrence Plays on checkout, then you'll get 20% off your first month. So as ever, thank you very much for watching. Uh, make sure please make sure you subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.